So Jimmy and I have decided that we're gonna sell our bus and downsize into a van. Our plan is to buy the van and build it out ourselves, but there's a little bit of an issue with that because if you watched our bus build series, then you know that we built that out at Jimmy's parents' house. They had a workshop which we were able to rent out and use and we had all these tools available to us. They've sold their house since then. So we gotta figure out where we're gonna build this thing. The last couple of weeks, Jimmy and I have been around the Idaho Falls area in Idaho. I've never really been to a town that is quite this friendly to campers. And uh, let me show you what I mean. So they have these really nice free fill stations with water hookups. So we can just pull up and fill up our water tanks totally free. It is also right next to a dump station. So I think we're gonna use that after this. I've never seen a place like this, but it is so convenient and it has been really nice since we've been in the area. We've just been using water as much as we want because we don't have to worry about where we're gonna get it next. Although we have been taking advantage of the free water in this town, we have also kind of been keeping in mind that we're about to downsize to a van where we're not gonna have 100 gallons of fresh water. We're probably only gonna have about 40. So we've been paying much more attention to how much we actually use and we made our 40 gallon tank last six days with both of us showering twice. Did you just admit how often we shower? I think so. We've been. <laughs> Uh, I'm not proud of it, but um, you know, it's just life on the road. That's the cost of being off grid. That's true. There's a cost and that's one of them. Real quick, we want to take a minute to thank today's sponsor, Athletic Greens. Jimmy and I both have been drinking AG1 every morning for about the last month and we are both absolutely loving it. Since we've added it to our morning routine, we both feel like we're able to focus a little better and we feel like we have more energy. I'm obviously not a doctor, but when your body's getting the essential nutrients it needs, it's just able to work better. Just one scoop of AG1 has 75 vitamins, minerals, and whole food source nutrients. There's really no way that Jimmy and I could reasonably get all of that from our regular diet every single day, especially when we're focused on traveling or trying to build out a van. We also have some individual travel packs, so we can still drink our AG1 even when we're on the go. AG1 supports gut health, immunity, energy, focus, and it's crazy how convenient it is. Every morning, we just pour a glass of cold water, add a scoop of AG1, shake it up, and we're good to go. It's super easy to make, and it really just sets the nutritional foundation for our entire day. If you wanna try AG1, you can click the link in our description and you'll get a one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin drops and five travel packs for free with your first purchase. last big travel day with the bus we left Idaho Falls and we are on our way to Salt Lake City in Utah we've been through there before a little bit but we haven't really spent much time so I think it's gonna take us a little while to kind of get our bearings hopefully this is gonna be a good place where we can stay for a couple of months while we sell the bus buy a van build the van out and then hopefully get back on the road before too long so this is gonna be kind of a fun adventure we're checking out our new potential home Although I am noticing the further south we go, the hotter it's getting. We never planned to be in Utah in June. We were hoping to be in Canada around this time, but we're flexible. Well, we made it as far as we're gonna go today. We're about 20 miles from downtown Salt Lake City. This is our first time staying at a Cabela's, but I think we'll be moving out in the morning. Today was probably a short one for you guys, but for us, it was a long drive. We always add like 
20 to 30 percent to the google estimate whenever we drive anywhere so if it says three hours we know in reality it'll take like four hours so today was a long one for us so we're gonna get some rest and wake up early tomorrow and start exploring downtown salt lake city so we'll see if we're gonna regret this decision but natalie and i are trying to look as presentable as we can it's like gonna be a high of like 90 to 95 degrees and we've both got jeans on and that's because the first thing we're doing today is that we've got a couple appointments at some apartment complexes that we're gonna tour and hopefully apply to so I really hope that they'll let us in couple different apartments and we're just trying to see what their rates are if they have anything available and so far I think it's gonna be pretty hard for us to find an apartment especially because we need it to be affordable for us uh, short term and close enough for us to bike into the potential maker space where we might end up building out our van Ready to stumble over all my words. Hey, I called last week about potentially renting out an apartment, and I was gonna call to see if it was still available. I don't have anything to tour. I'm fully occupied. Trying to find a place to stay is becoming a lot more difficult than I thought it would be. We've uh, we've been to three places in person, and we have called probably close to four or five. Not everyone is necessarily booked out, but they're either at least three weeks out minimum or it's just kind of over our price budget. So we're kind of figuring out our options. We're looking on Facebook Marketplace and Craigslist for subleases in the area because this is a really nice place. We're actually kind of near downtown. Um, but those are really hard to find also. There's only a few. We've contacted a few places, but um, they're really only looking for single roommates. So, I don't know. I think we're gonna take a break, get some lunch, and then maybe check out a couple more apartments. I mean, I guess we don't really have an option, so. All right, so Natalie and I almost gave up on searching for a sublease on Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist, but we were doing some last minute research during lunch and we think we found a good place. So I'm gonna send them a message and see what they say and maybe we can go check out the place. But it's crazy because Natalie and I both could get two separate subleases at two different houses and that would be cheaper than these studio apartments that we've been asking about. So I don't wanna do that, we're not gonna do that, but it's crazy that that's an option at this point. So finding an apartment is not the only thing we have to do before we can build out our van here in Salt Lake City. We also need to make sure that we have a place to actually build a van. So the next thing we have lined up is a maker space. I've never heard of a maker space before this, but it's basically an area where creative people can sign up and you pay a monthly fee and you have access to an assortment of tools and different kind of stations. So we're going to go find out about this one and see if it'll work for our van build. Now that's a bus. <laughs> that's a train. <laughs> that's a bus. What are your first impressions? It looks colorful. There's a lot of murals and uh, there's a lot of other really nice vans uh, being converted inside the gate also. So I feel like it's a pretty safe place to work, but we'll see more when we get the official tour. I hope that we're creative enough to keep up with these guys because just from the outside alone, it looks like there's a lot of artists who work out of here. Come 
contact info for the staff. Uh, it's just listed our hours of operation as well as our phone and email address information. One thing to keep in mind about Big Salt Lake is that the staff is here for 20 hours a week. Uh, compare that to the I don't think that could have gone any better. That seems like a really great place. We'll even be able to learn skills that we don't know how to do already. They have all sorts of workshops that we can access now that we're members, we joined. They have a wood shop, a metal fabrication shop, 3D printing stations. I'm sure there's a lot of other things I, I'm missing. It's just, it's such a huge list of things you can do there. And that's just gonna be awesome for us. And we were able to rent their very last parking spot. So we can park the bus there for now, and then we can park the van there, and we can't sleep overnight here, but we can leave the vehicle here while we're renovating it. And so that way we're really close to all the power tools, and it's just going to be such a convenient way for us to work. It's really nice to have a win after a day of, like, shooting and missing on apartments, so I'm really glad that this particular part of our new phase is fallen into place. The big reason we wanted to show up today was because they do weekly guided tours. So that's actually what we just did and that's how we got all the information. Um, we didn't record as much because we wanted to be respectful to the other people doing the tour as well. But uh, so today I think we're going to head out, go to a Cracker Barrel and call it a night. But tomorrow we have full access. You want to put this up? Yeah. All right. We're official. We're official. Aw. Although we just got here, the first thing we're going to do is go inside because even though it's the morning, it is so hot in Salt Lake City right now. And uh, we don't have any AC, so we're going to go inside and cool down a little bit and then figure out a plan for today. So this is the parking lot that we'll be working out of. I think there are 11 official spots and we actually reserved the very last one. So we got pretty lucky. And um, there's a number of different builds here. I think there's three sprinters, a minivan, another school bus, and then a couple RVs. So I think we'll fit right in. Now what? We split everything up into like four different main categories, I guess you could call. So one is we have to sell the bus. Two, we have to get an apartment. Three, we have to find a workshop to work out of. And four, we have to actually buy the van. Those are the steps we need to start the van build, I guess. And then the work begins. And then the work begins. All right, so one um, was we've got to sell the bus. That is still underway. Obviously, we drove it here, um, so yeah, that's still in progress. Two, we've got to find an apartment, and that one, uh, we have a promising lead. We're waiting for him to get back to us, but I think we might have found a sublease. We'll see. We'll keep you posted. Uh, the third thing we had to do was find a workshop to actually build the van out, and you're looking at it. <laughs> so we did one, we've done one thing. Yeah, we got one thing done. That feels really good. Um, yeah. And then the fourth thing is buy a van. We've looked into it a little bit, um, but we really just kind of need to sell the bus before we can actually worry about that. Our goal is to complete this van build in, are we going to say three months? I want to say two months, but we should probably say three months. Three is still going to be ambitious. That includes buying the van? I think that's once we buy it. Once we buy it, I bet we could do it in 60 days. That would be amazing, but <laughs> it took us six months to build out the bus, so yeah, we really had to pick up the pace, but yeah. I think we can do it a little faster. Yeah. We're eager to get back on the road. So I guess today we're going to start taking advantage of the AC, get some work done, and then figure out what the plan is for the rest of today. We're kind of finding ourselves in a decision paralysis. There's just so many things we still need to figure out first. We might try to distract ourselves and uh, do a little bit of work on the bus. Like I said, uh, we're still working on selling it. And so there's just a couple things we need to wrap up. Like we're planning to put a fresh coat of paint on 
everything just to make it look nice and crisp. So I think we're gonna go outside and uh, try to brave some of the heat and put on a fresh coat of paint on the cabinets today. repainting our white cabinets white is because they've just gotten a little dingy and a little worn out since we hit the road almost a year ago at this point and we're just gonna touch it up so that the paint looks really nice and fresh for the new owner we haven't sold it yet like as we're recording this but we will and we want it to look nice for that person and Jimmy actually already repainted the upper cabinets a couple of like a month ago or so just to see if it would help and it makes a world of difference because if you look at our lower cabinets right now they kind of have stripes where the paint is cracked as the wood has shifted but the upper cabinets which have been recently repainted look absolutely pristine so i think that this will pay off <laughs> we did it. Oh, I can't wait for our first project on the van. I know. It's fun uh, getting a taste of what the makerspace could be like. While I was painting in here, Natalie was inside getting a little bit of work done on the computer, which doesn't sound like much, but they have air conditioning in there, which I'm sure we've mentioned previously in the video. <laughs> it's so much more fun repainting than painting. Yes. Because the stress is just way lower. <laughs> Especially when you're painting it the same color. That yeah, always helps. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, we're going to end it here. We still have a lot to do on our to-do list, as you might know. Um, so hopefully by the time we check in next week, we'll have some more updates for you. Yeah, wish us luck. We're gonna need it, all the luck we can get. Yeah. All right, well, thanks for watching and we'll see you next week. Bye.